Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I just thought I'd um, jump on, uh, basically do a, just a, a quick sort of uh, video regarding a post that I put out or a post I shared earlier on today. Um, it, it was it was from a club called Saitaru, I think it was, and uh, the guy that owns and runs that club <clears throat> that runs that club is another Gojiru club. Um, and they are, uh, I believe that they are associated with Sewakai, which is again another part of Gojiru uh, in Japan and stuff. Um, and again, I'm more connected up with this particular guy now because again, since we came off and, you know, we were doing our own thing, running our own club, you know, it was one of those things that, you know, the more people that I speak to, um, you know, the more people you connect to via social, your social media platforms, um, you know, the better acquainted you get with different people. Um, and not only that, you know, where we were running, you know, or sorry, where we were training before within another style, um, it was deemed one of those things that you shouldn't go off and, you know, do cross training with anybody else. You know, you should stay within your own club and, uh, this, that, and the other, which, you know, for them, for them, it was more of a loyalty thing. Um, I really, you know, sort of emphasize the fact, the fact that, you know, if, if you're cross training, if you're, you know, if you're doing karate, for instance, and, you know, you're going to different seminars to, you know, broaden your own knowledge and your own, you know, karate, karate ability, then, then why not? <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't, really don't see the problem with it. It's like, um, we had a young lad, uh, just recently, he only joined us probably, or oh, maybe four four or five months ago, lovely lad, progressing absolutely brilliantly, doing a real great job, um, however, since he's been, since he's gone up to secondary school, um, he's found judo, and, you know, he's decided to part ways with us, which is absolutely great, not a problem, you know, that for me, you know, again, love, love to him to absolutely stay, of course I would, uh, however, you know, he's found something that he wants to go and, you know, progress and do, do more things with, then absolutely why not, you know, I send him off with my love and our, uh, you know, our well wishes for him to go and do that, you know, and obviously again, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, he's going to do absolutely awesome at it, um, so, so I encourage that you go and try and, you know, find new stuff for yourself, um, you know, again, everything will complement everything else. You know, if you're doing judo, if you're doing jujitsu, if you're doing kickboxing, it's gonna, it's gonna complement everything that we do already. So, um, <clears throat> it's one of those things of, you know, don't feel as though that you've, you know, you can't go off and go and do your own thing if that's what you want to do. Obviously, again, it would be one of those things of, you know, not going off and joining, you know, starting your own club, of course. But uh, um, it's one of those things of, you know, look for, um, you know, ways to improve yourself. Look for ways to go and get more knowledge. Um, you know, we can offer as much as I possibly can with the resources that we have. However, everybody is different. So there's, you know, there's possibilities out there to go and, you know, find other things as well. So, um, but anyway, so going on to the post that I shared earlier, um, and again, it was from a guy called Richard Hangkong, uh, and he runs Saitaru, um, and I believe they're sort of London based. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, but anyway, lovely group. Uh, and again, this particular post came out this morning and I looked at that and I thought, do you know what? That makes a lot of sense. You know, I, I, I you know, I, I, again, being connected with so many people, you get to see, you know, so many different posts being put out there from, from time to time, from day to day. And you, and you read them and think, actually, that makes a lot of sense. Um, it's like Chrissy, she works in a school and she's connected with a, a lovely lady, um, called Sarah. Uh, and again, she puts out these positive quotes every day. I look at that and I think, what a fantastic quote. Excuse me cup of coffee um but yeah so anyway so going on to this um particular post um that was shared this morning i looked at it and i was reading through it and i thought okay all right that's great so i'll read through it very quickly i've got it up on my screen here so uh <clears throat> during your karate journey um you will be tested physically now yes absolutely you are going to be tested physically you know if you're you know, again, everybody's fitness levels are totally different. If you've been with us for a few and you know a number of years, you're going to be you know you're going to be um, maybe a little bit fitter than the person that's never done any training at all, um, never done any sort of gym work, never done any exercise. Of course, they're going to be you know fitter. Um, 
it's one of those things you are going to be tested physically. You know, you're going to have to be bouncing on the spot. You're going to have to be holding stances. You're going to have to be punching bags. You're going to have to be kicking pads. You know, you are going to build up a sweat. Um, you know, and that is probably one of the, one of the, you know, one of the hardest things is making sure that, you know, your body's ready for, for training, ready, you know, and again, it's one of those things you can just work at, keep going at it each week. Um, <coughs> And then you'll have uh, the next one on here, you know, basically says, you know, you will be tested mentally. Absolutely. You know, and mental health at the moment is probably one of the highest priorities on the list at the moment. Um, you know, we can we can see that massively, you know, since COVID's been about and where the children haven't been able to go out and also the adults as well. You know, where we've had that, you know, that massive time of being in lockdown, you know, we've been really challenged mentally. You know, and it's like it's all well and good having that strong body and that, you know, that that body to be able to fight or spar or, you know, you know, do your karate and stuff like that. But mentally, if you're not mentally in it, you know, that that, that that's going to let the body down straight away. Um, so mentally, you need to be mentally strong as well as as well as physically strong. Um, and I think and I think again, just recently as well, it's like it's, it's one of those things that. You know, we were we were working on a few things. Uh, I think it was in one of the schools um, during this week, and we were doing a little bit of rolling across the floor. You know, it's one of them. Thi it's one of them things. You know, it'll be oh well. You know, you should have had mats down. Well, yeah, okay, all right, fair enough. You could argue the fact we should have had mats down. Um, but however, you know, they're on a uh, they're on a, a soft wooden vinyl floor um and again it was one of those things where the children are rolling over and i had them sort of having having their um sort of elbows and arms sort of tucked in and every time they rolled you know you get oh my arms hurt bless them you know bless them fair enough um and again you know some of these children are like nine ten years of age um you know i think it's one of those things you know we've got to get over that you know uh, just a little, you know, and again, they weren't rolling fast, they weren't rolling heavy, they weren't dropping to the floor, they were already lying down, so it was just one of those things of doing a roly-poly, pretty much, you know, rolling rolling over, um, so they were lying on their back, and then they'd roll onto their front, and keeping their arms in nice and tight, and then they'd roll onto their back again, so it was one of those things that, you know, some of the children are very sensitive at the moment with, with certain things, and I think we've, you know, as coaches, instructors, whatever, you know, we just got to try and build them up, you know, it's one of those things of, okay, have we got to chop your arm off? No, okay, let's get over it then, yeah, um, you know, it's, so it's one of those, it's one of those things, so it's, again, mentally, you've got to be, you know, you've got to be mentally strong um, to be able to, you know, do what we do, um, and then the next one on the list will be, you will be tested socially, uh, socially, yes, you know, you're going to be in situations where, you know, someone's going to ask you a question and, um, you know, it's going to be one of those things of, uh, I'm not quite sure. I don't have the answer. That's fine. You know, the worst thing you can do is just clam up and not say anything, you know, because again, that's never, ever going to get you, um, talking, you know, and again, if you can't talk to me, there's loads of people within the club that you can talk to. Um, you know, we're very approachable people. Sensei Chris is very approachable. You know, she's, like I say, she's the face of it. You know, she meets and greets you at the door along with the other guys as well. You know, we've got, we've got Tony, we've got Tina, some of my other guys as well. We've got um, Jess and obviously Kieran as well. You know, you'll see them from time to time. Any of those guys you can talk to, any of the senior guys as well um, that we have in the class, anybody that you feel as though that you think, actually, you know, I've worked with this person you know, quite a few times, actually, I could have a chat with him, you know, and again, that's a so social thing, um, you know, I think it's one of those things now, you know, every now and then, I'll be out in, you know, I'll go, be going shopping or whatever it is, and, you know, and I'll see, you know, I think there was one week where I went out, and I, I think it was, I, I saw, um, I think I saw Carla and Kyra in, in Asda's in there, we're just chatting away, you know, so it's like one of them sort of social things as well, so although, you know, we, we train in the dojo and stuff, you know, socially, there, there there might be things that are going to be going on as well. So more so now, now that we're sort of opening up properly, you know, we'll start to have events going on, maybe, you know, an awards evening, something like that. And again, it's going to be a social thing. Um, next one, you'll have your confidence tested, 100%. So you will have your confidence tested. And that was basically going on to the social thing as well. Um, having your, your confidence tested by... 
Um, it might be one of the things I'll get you to come out and, you know, demonstrate a, a particular move, or it might be I'll get you to come out and do a particular warm up, or, you know, just answering a question, being confident to answer, you know, to answer a question. Um, or, you know, taking a small group, for instance, or I don't know, you, you, you sort of get the idea, you know, your confidence is going to be tested. It is going to be one of those things of, right, I'll put somebody on the spot and go, right, tonight, can I get you to take these guys without any prior warning? I'll go, can you take these guys? Bang, straight away. They don't, you know, they haven't got all day to worry about being, you know, delivering that. It's literally, they're being put on the spot. And I'll be honest with you, that's probably one of the best things that, that, that happened to me. I was put on the spot from, from day one to teach the class and bang, straight away. I was like, right, you know, I felt very uncomfortable when I, um, when I was teaching, when I first did my first class. Um, however, I was dropped in it from a very, you know, from a very big height. Um, but here I am now, proof in the pudding, I suppose, if you, if you want to look at it like that, yeah? Um, your ego is going to be tested. Absolutely. You know, your ego is going to be tested. So at times, you know, you're going to, you're going to, you know, it's one of those things. Sometimes you can, you can sort of like big a person up that much that then all of a sudden their ego is then up here. I've been in there, but obviously we've had that situation before where I was in, I was in a, uh, like I say, another club before. And again, it's like, you know, you big people up so much and then all of a sudden the ego starts to get up there and it's like, actually, mm, I'm not quite sure about this. Um, and again, so I want to make sure that, you know, your egos are kept in, in, in tip top shape. It's not one of those things that just because you're growing and evolving and getting up the ladder even more and even more that your ego then goes, boom, look at me. I'm the big, but I am now. I know that we don't have guys like that. Okay. But again, from time to time, it's always good to double check on yourselves. Okay. There's been a couple of times that myself and the kids have been talking they go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Humble yourself. Okay, yeah, that probably just sound a little bit arrogant. You're absolutely right, yeah. Okay, so it's one of those things of just making sure that, you know, your ego's kept in kept in check. And, you know, you don't sort of get a little bit too big for your boots. Again, I'm using language now that's coming across in a way that people are going, ooh. But I'm just doing it in that way. You know, keep your ego in check. Just make sure that, you know, you're not sort of stepping on anybody else's toes. You know, and sort of, you know, maybe, for instance, it might be one of those things that, you know, someone will ask me a question and then someone else will back it up and go, actually, no, it is done this way. And I'm like, hold on a second. Who's the instructor? Do you get what I mean? So, again, it's just keeping that ego in check. All right. OK, so the next one. You will experience the almighty slump. Oh, yes, you will indeed. You will experience the almighty slump. It will be the fact of. What's my purpose? Why am I doing this? Am I getting anything out of it? And we've all asked ourselves the same question. So when I do get the odd message here and there to say, do you know what, I'm not sure why I'm doing it, da 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 You know, again, then I sit back and I think, right, am I serving this person correctly? Have I not seen something that I needed to see and um, adapt to? Uh, and then it, I'm, you know, again, I'm asking myself all of these questions and I'm thinking, OK, right. So what do I need to do to put this right? What do I need to do to make this person feel as though that they're worthy of you know, doing what they're doing? Um, and again, I feel that slump sometimes as well. You know, where there was a you know, few things you have, a, you know, a situation might happen in class and you think, you know, that could have gone a lot better. That could have been handled differently. And that's what makes me feel slumped. Not the fact that I want to give up and, you know, jack it all in. But it might be the fact that, uh, you know, something's come up in class, you know, uh, you know, a situation's come up in class, you know, whether it's, I don't know, somebody teaching or, or whether, you know, we might be doing sparring, for instance, or doing contact work or something like that. Something's come up and then, I'm thinking, right, so how am I going how am I gonna control this now? How am I going to sort that situation out? That's when I feel slumped because it's like, why didn't I see that coming? Why didn't I stop it in the why didn't I stop it in that second that it needed to be stopped? And that's when I start to feel right. I then go home, excuse me, I go home and then start to think, okay, so how am I gonna fix it? How you know, could I have worded that better? 
could I have made changes here? Could I have done this? Could I have served that person a bit better? Um, so that's what I mean by an almighty slump. You know, for yourselves, you might get to that stage where you think, oh, I'm not learning anything new. Um, you know, you will hit barriers. You will hit barriers. You'll get to a barrier. And, it, you know, there's one of these things, they call it the blue belt blues. Um, you know, you're halfway, you're halfway to your first stand, which is your black belt. And then they, you know, it's, you know, they call it the blue belt blues. It's one of those things that you'll get to that blue belt level. And all of a sudden you feel as though you've done a fair amount, but then you feel as though that you haven't learned anything new for, you know, for a while. That's because you're still refining all of the stuff that you've already done. So regardless whether you're a blue belt or not, you do not forget about your yellow belt stuff, your orange belt stuff, your green belt stuff, your purple belt stuff. You refine everything, okay? Do you see what I mean? So it's literally you go into that blue belt level, and then you go back and you refine everything and then come back up to that level again, then you push on, okay? So it's literally, you know, that's what I mean by sort of having that little bit of a slump, you know, when you get to a level and you think, I'm not learning anything new, what's the purpose of me doing it, and so, and so on and so on. Um, so that's what I mean by that. I know this is a very long video, but I feel as though this is a good video to make. Um, you will experience pain. Yes, you will experience pain. And what I mean by that is like, like I said earlier about the kids rolling over and hit, hurting their elbows. Um, again, it wasn't one of those things that they were dropping to the floor or dropping from a great height and hurting themselves. All they were doing is just rolling across the floor. You know, you are going to experience pain. You are going to experience like... Uh, I was doing some kick work with, uh, who is it, with Carl Beeson yesterday at our Tuesday night session. Uh, and I think I was holding one of the wacker pads. I think it was, and he came up, and I think he caught my hand or my elbow or something. Okay, that's going to be his pain. You know, he's caught his toe on one, you know, it was either on my hand or on my elbow. I can't remember what it was. But again, he's going to experience that little bit of pain. It's one of those things. We're not doing, we're not doing a, uh, a knitting class. We're not doing a class where we're just sitting down and, you know, I don't know, typing or whatever. You know, we're doing, we're doing a, a, a physical class. We're doing martial arts. And that's what you need to understand when you come in. You are going to hit pads. You are going to get, you know, the odd bump and bruise here and there. You know, you've, that's what's going to make you stronger at the end of the day. OK, so you are going to experience that pain. OK, all right. So moving on to the next one. You're going to experience frustration. Yes, you are going to experience frustration. You're going to be frustrated with yourself because you can't get a move right. And that's fine. It's absolutely fine. You're going to get frustrated because, I don't know, let's say, for instance, you haven't been put in for a grading yet. You're going to get frustrated with that. Absolutely. Yes, you are. And that's absolutely fine. But you will learn from that. So it might be something that, you know, you're doing a particular move, move doing a particular move in a kata, for instance. You know, you're going through something and then you're going, oh, God, why can't I get that right? Why can't I get that right? I promise you now it will get to a stage where it will go bang then all of a sudden the light bulb goes on up in here and it's boom you'll get it every single time so ex so what i mean by frustration for me would be <clears throat> i would be learning a kata so very early days i would be learning a kata it would be one of those things that i would get the first six or seven moves okay and then there will be one move after that that i couldn't get quite right but then i got the middle part which then that was great but then I'd be in, there, then there would be another move that I couldn't get quite right, which would then link me onto the ending part. That's what I mean by frustration. I would be able to perform those three sections correctly, but there will be one move in between those sections that would absolutely rock my head, and I'd be like, "What the hell? Why am I doing it wrong? Why can't I get it?" That was what I mean by frustration. You know, you are going to be frustrated. You might not be able to do a full push up. That's absolutely fine. Do one. And then the following week, you'll do two. And then the following week, you'll do three. It doesn't matter. They don't have to come in hundreds. Yeah, don't have to come in hundreds. One step at a time. You know, and another another thing that popped up the other day, you know, nobody fell at the top of the mountain. Nobody falls at the top of the mountain. They've got to climb that mountain. That's exactly what you're doing at the moment. Whatever the journey is for you, whether it's exercise, whether it's self-defense, whether it's just want to do something socially, you know, in, in, in the classes or whether it's just you know something that you, you want to achieve a black belt, um, whatever that 
goal is for you, you've got to climb to the top of that mountain. You've got to keep on going. And when it gets tough, you've got to keep on going some more. And when it gets even tougher, you've got to keep on going even more. Yeah, we've had people that have had injuries. Um, just recently, there was a doubt in my mind that I wouldn't be able to grade someone this time round because they've had an injury just recently. Um, however, they busted it out. They did what they needed to do and they were successful. So I was well chuffed with that. Okay, so that's what I mean by a little bit of frustration. You will have doubts in your mind. Absolutely. You're going to have doubts in your mind. There's going to be things, there's going to be bits and pieces that uh, you're going to be doubtful of. You're going to think, hold on a second. Is that quite right? Ask a question. Whether it's asking me a question, whether it's asking Kieran, Jess, Chris, uh, you know, any any of the guys, Paul, Dennis, you know, uh, Mike, Lewis, George, any of the any of the top guys that have maybe got a little bit more knowledge than most, uh, ask them, okay? And if they don't know the answer, then they'll come to me, and then obviously again we can work through that. I might not have all the answers, and that's absolutely fine. I will try my best though to try and work it out and get to an answer as best as possible. Okay, so that you are going to have doubts in stuff. There's another one here. You will bleed. You might end up getting a, you know, you might end up getting one of those things of, um, you know, you might end up, I don't know, maybe getting a bit of a bop on the bop on the mouth from a, you know, a technique that was accidental. Um, you know, I know I was sparring uh, Paul Withers. I think Paul Withers. I think it was on uh, Sunday Sunday's grading. Um, and again, he's coming in. He's coming in nice and heavy with his techniques. Great little, yeah, he was working really well, doing absolutely fantastic. I came up, boom, beautiful roundhouse kick to the side of the chops. And then he turned around to me afterwards, he said, um, he said, oh, I had a little bit of blood on my gum shield. Yep, so you are going to bleed from time to time. It's, you know, it's going to be one of those things. It wasn't done intentional. It was one of those things that it came up. He may have been moving at that particular time that my leg came up and it just caught him. So again, it's not the fact that it's going to be, it's malicious. It's one of those things that it might be just slightly accidental. Okay, one of those things as well. So not only do we talk about, you know, obviously again, you know, you are going to bleed. It might be one of those things of, you know, you need to see, need to keep yourself in check. Long fingernails, for instance, long toenails, for instance, making sure that, you know, everything is kept hygienic. OK, there's nothing worse than there's nothing worse than being, you know, doing some contact work with someone where they come up with a kick and, it, you know, your toenail digs into their wrist or whatever it is and you end up with a big cut. So, again, that also comes with your, you know, being being, um, you know, hyg hygienic within within your own self. Which then obviously brings me on to, again, you know, making sure that you have a nice clean gi, making sure that you put on a bit of deodorant. Yeah, if you know, if you know that, you know, yourself. Um, and again, it's one of those things of, you know, everybody's different. Everybody sweats, but it's when someone sweats and they end up sort of having that little bit of a smell about them. Yeah, nobody wants to work with a smelly person. All right. Um, I'm not saying that we have that in the club. I'm just letting, you know, it's one of those things, again, just reiterating what we do, making sure that you do put a little bit of deodorant on or a little bit of perfume, whatever it is. If you know that when you sweat, you, you, you know, you start to sort of like have a bit of a pong, okay, just put a little bit of deodorant on, that's all, okay? Nobody likes working with a smelly one, all right? Anyway, so that's that. Okay, all right, you will want to quit. You will want to quit. I've done it. I say I've done it. I've I've quit one club and went off and did our own thing. Obviously, what we're doing now. You are going to want to quit. You are, you know, we've have we have people quit all the time. Not not as many as most, uh, but do we do have pit have people quit all the time? It's one of those things. Oh yeah, well you know he's found he, he's found doing this now. Oh yeah, oh well he doesn't want to do that. He wants to go off and play football now. Or it might be one of the things. Ah oh, well you know I thought it was going to be a lot more you know. You know, scrapping and fighting and stuff. Well, yeah, okay. So there's, there's, you know, there's going to be all of these things that come up. Why you want to quit? Um, oh, the time doesn't suit me anymore. Fantastic. Oh, there might be, you know, it might be one of the things of, um, oh, he wants to go out and play with his friends more. Fantastic. Not a problem. You know, I'm not going to be. I'm not going to sit here and turn around and tell anybody how to parent. OK, I, I personally, for myself, this is my own personal opinion on how I see this fitting. Um, now, when I first started karate, I started for Kieran uh, and then Jess then joined in after that. And then obviously then Sensei Chrissy as well and myself. Um, 
when it got to when it got to days that you know when it got to days where for instance Jess didn't want to come it was like come on get your uniform on let's go okay it was one of those things now if i if i said oh, all right don't worry about it just you know you do you you know you quit they would have they would have quit years ago um but as a parent for myself i wouldn't let them quit on that okay and that's you know and again i'm not i'm not disputing anybody at all on how they want to parent their children you know everybody is different you have totally all different you know lifestyles whatever it is um you know this is just my this is just my opinion you know you're you're, you're teaching the kids how to quit you know, you go, oh, yeah, all right, don't go this week then. You know, don't go this week then. That's absolutely fine. You know, it's it's absolutely your choice at the end of the day. But, you know, at some stage, you are going to have that question in your mind. Oh, uh, you know, I want to give up. I don't want to do it anymore. You know, why not? That's when you need to come up and, you know, build your confidence up and go, actually, the reason why I, the reason why I want to quit is because I'm not getting this for instance or i'm not getting that out of it or whatever you know i'm open to feedback 100 percent. you know because at the end of the day if it means that i get you know um a little bit of feedback from someone to say actually so and so didn't get this that's the reason why they're quitting not necessarily for a grade because at the end of the day i choose you know and we discuss obviously um, within our family to go, is that person quite ready yet? If it's a no, then it's a no. If it's a yes, it's a yes, obviously, whatever. Um, but it's one of those things of, um, you know, if you want to quit, then obviously, again, that's totally your choice, okay? The last part, and again, this has gone on for 20, 26 minutes, this video, so I know I've talked a lot. Um, so I'll read it through again. During your karate journey, you will be tested physically. You will be tested mentally. You will be tested socially. You will have your confidence tested. You will have your ego tested. You will experience the almighty slump. You will experience pain. You will experience frustration. You will also have doubts. You will bleed, like I said before. yeah, And you will want to quit. And if you stick with it, you will become stronger than you could have ever imagined. OK, and again, most of this is all about mindset. Most of this is is, is being up here with that. You know, and it's, it's, it's one of those things of just just trying your absolute best every week. That's all I'll ever ask for is that you try your best. If I can see that, you know, if I can see that you're, you know, I don't know, you've got a, you know, a few muscle issues or whatever it is. Yeah, if I can see that you're, you're, you're mentally, you're trying your absolute best, perfect. Okay, if it's one of those things of, it's just a sloppy technique, then I know that you're not in it 100%. And if it's one of those things of, if it's a continual thing, then I'm, I'm I, in my mind, I'm questioning, are you the right person for the club? We had, I'm just letting you in on this, by the way. So we had a, um, we had an adult came, uh, come and do a, an adult session for us a few weeks back. Um, and again, he was, uh, I think it was about 20, 21, 22. I think it was, he came in, I dropped him into one of the adults classes. Um, he told me he'd done a little bit of martial arts before six months of judo. Uh, and I believe he did like six months of MMA, ma ma uh, mixed martial arts, um, which already gave me alarm bells because it was like six months of judo, six months of MMA, that tells me that he hasn't stuck with any of that already. So he was very limited on his, his martial arts. However, when I'd had an email from him, it was one of those things of, um, <clears throat> you know, he was already experienced. So I thought, right, I'll stick him in the adults class, advanced class and see how he gets on. Um, and then he did a first session. I thought, OK, he's got on. He's got on pretty well. So I invited him along to another session to have a little look at on a Friday evening. Um and then the more that I sort of got to know him, the more I understood his needs. His needs were not our club at all. He wanted to just literally hit, pummel things, uh, you know. And then straight away, alarm bells were ringing in my head thinking, right, if I put this guy into my club, um, first off, he's not controlled enough to be able to be partnered up with any of my, any of my students at all. Um, and if I did let him come in and put a pair of gloves on, I think he would, you know, I think he would uh, cause a little bit of damage. So it wasn't worth me 
um, you know, making that decision to let him come in just for the sake of, you know, getting his direct debit, if that makes sense. So, you know, and the same, same for everybody, really. You've got to suit, you know, our club has got to suit you first and foremost, and then also vice versa. You've got to suit our club. So if I feel as I mean, I, I was quite happy to tell this guy that, you know, th this club wasn't for him. Um, I said, you need something else. You need to go and find, I don't know, a boxing gym or uh, another martial arts club. But this for you, this this club is definitely not for you. You'll notice that I have loads of different age groups in, in, in the class. Um, I don't feel that you're a right, the right suit for our particular club. So, um, so you, you need to have a look at that as well. Just making sure that, you know, the club does suit you, um, you know, and you've got to be fully invested in it. You've got to be fully invested in it. If you, you know, I don't want people to come in and think, oh yeah, I'm just going to come in and just, you know, learn a few self-defense moves and then go off and then, you know, you've got to be fully invested in it. It's one of those things that you need to make sure that, you know, you're in it for the, for the long haul. You know, people might have that goal of going, right, I just want to get to black belt. That's absolutely fine. Not a problem at all. I don't want you to see that end goal, though. I want you to see past that and just carry on with it. You know, and again, everybody moves on. Everybody's different. Everybody's life changes. So, you know, and likewise, you can understand how, you know, people do move on to do different things. Just like I did when I when I was in another club, you know, things weren't suiting me that well. So I moved on and did my, you know, and basically doing our own thing now. Um, so... So with that, and again, just sort of uh, just sort of to wrap everything up, really, it's, you know, I hope we've sort of made a few pointers here that you can sort of, you know, read back to yourself and think, actually, yeah, I have been physically tested. Yeah, and I was really struggling on that day or that, that particular class or whatever it is, you know, and I think we've just got to big, we've got to keep bigging each other up from time to time as well, just making sure that, you know, we want to have that sort of that, that thing of like, when I when I um, when I'm watching a student, it will be one of those things of, okay, are they focused? Is their technique good? You know, can they put a little bit more energy in on energy in on their techniques? You know, and are they worthy of the grade that they're either on or going for? Um, so those are the sort of three the sort of three things that I sort of look at and just make sure that you know they're they're progressing. So it will be one of those things. Oh, well done, you know, well done, Isaac. You know, that, that head level block today was absolutely awesome, mate. But tell you what, what you could do is just get a little bit more power going in that for me and then we'll be absolutely on point then, ready for that next grade going forward, yeah? So it's one, saying the person's name, making sure that they know that you've got eye contact and they know that their name's being said so they know that you've got, you, you know, sorry, you've got their attention straight away. And it's giving positive feedback, so it might be one of those things of, oh, Isaac, so I think what we need to do, make sure that we can maybe try and get a little bit more power on that technique. However, your head level block was absolutely brilliant, mate. The focus was great. The drive was brilliant. Your stance was strong. I'm giving a little bit of positive feedback by giving him something to work on, but then bigging him up to say, well done. Um, and again, I think as all adults, we can have that in life. And that is just, you know, we understand what we're trying to do. We're trying to inspire the children, inspire the younger, you know, the, the younger generation. So as adults, I think it's very important for us to do that. You know, whether that's you guys, you know, in the in the back line of, you know, the Shinful Dojo or whatever it is, and you're working with a child or you can see someone that, you you know, you're they've got your eye contact and you'll go, Oh, fantastic, Kyra. Awesome work for you tonight. Well done. It doesn't have to always come from me. It can come from anybody. But if they know that they've got that point of contact where you're going such and such, massive well done, it's a, it, it plays a big part on what everybody does. Um, so anyway, 33 minutes and 39 seconds I've done this video. So I've talked a hell of a lot. Um, but I think that was a very good video today. Anyway... Thank you very much. If you have ended up getting to the end of this um, end of this video, then great. Uh, if you haven't, make sure you go back to it and watch it again. All right. Anyway, cheers, guys. Take it steady. Bye bye.